Hey guys, Amanda here. I'm excited to come and chat with you because I'm hot and sweaty, just finished working out, and I don't know if you're like me, but when you work out, all of a sudden, <laughs> amazing ideas come, thoughts come, inspiration comes, and so I wanted to jump in and talk about how to get out of your funk um, while it was just rolling in my mind. So um, I am finishing up my power hour, and so just wanted to come in and maybe share something that is inspiring to you guys. So, how to get out of your funk. Okay, so I was thinking about this. Um, sometimes we get in a funk because we have expectations for people and they don't live up to our expectations. Have you ever experienced that? I know for me personally, I have. And it feels like it's something that the enemy can use so strongly. Now the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And the enemy, if we're not careful, if we open ourselves up to negative thinking, the enemy has this playground to come in and just jack up our thoughts, jack up our emotions, which then causes mental illness, it causes physical disease in the body, it, it causes poverty, it, it causes lack, and we don't live in the will of God, which is a place of abundance, of blessings, of prosperity, of health and wholeness. And so sometimes though, let's just be real, we can get in that place and it's like this broken record, like the script that we keep hearing over and over in our head, and it consumes us. We just think about all the negative thoughts. We think about how people disappointed us, that they hurt our feelings, that they didn't do what they said they were going to do. They didn't live up to the expectations that we have for ourselves. And so I want to get just really real and honest right now. If you were in this place where you're feeling salty, funky, you know, whatever, because of people, People are always probably, people are always probably, because I want to be soft, people are going to hurt your feelings. At some point in your life, people are going to not live up to your expectations. Why? Because they're not you. You have expectations because they're your expectations. You're living in your head with your expectations of how things should be. They're living in their head with their expectations. They're not you, they're not you. So more than likely at some point, either all the time or sometime, they're not gonna live up to your expectations. And that's okay. Because here's the flip side. You're not gonna live up to their expectations and quite possibly right now, you're not living up to their expectations. I, may not be living up to your expectations and you might not be living up to my expectations because really at the end of the day, our expectation is Jesus, our intimacy with Jesus. He's the only one who never fails us. He's the only one who never lets us down. And that's why our intimate relationship with Jesus should always be first and then people. Jesus first and then people. Jesus is the only one who will not let us down. He's the only one who loves us unconditionally. He's love. He's joy. He's peace. He's the source of your love. He's the source of your joy. He's the source of your peace. He's the source of your abundance. He's the source of everything. Everything comes from him. And everything else, we're going to be disappointed. People are people. They're humans. People are where they are. We can't expect people to match our expectations because they're where they are. Just like you're where you are and there may be someone farther along on the path that's like, why can't you get your ish together, right? Like we're all on different paths, we're all on different frequencies. And at the end of the day, you know if you read your Bible, we are only instructed to love. That's it. 
not judge because we don't want to be judged, right? Not judge, not live in unforgiveness because the Bible does say forgive. That's part of loving is forgiving. We're not to be harsh or critical because that's not love. We're not to keep score because that's not love. The end of the day, Jesus left us in the New Testament. When he went back to heaven, he left us with one commandment. And quite honestly, most of us need our entire lives to increase that muscle of love. And so I invite you as I, this is for me as well. Let's check our hearts and ask ourselves, are we operating in love? Go back and read 1 Corinthians 13 and check yourself and then focus on you because you've got your own work to do. You've got your job to love, just like I have my job to love others. And I need to go back regularly and check myself against 1 Corinthians 13 to check myself. And that gives me an entire lifetime of work not worked, but you know what I'm saying? A heart to focus on and you focus on your heart and let the others focus on their heart. And I promise you, if you get your heart, your eyes back on Jesus and you cultivate that intimacy with him, have daily encounters with him. If you need a good podcast to help you with that, my friend at Holistic Hearts, you can find her podcast series, Kristen Chadwick. Um, she can help you with that. She also does some coaching. If you need help with how to get intimate with Jesus, um, she's your girl. But I invite you to spend that time getting back with intimacy with Jesus. Checking your heart. Let the expectations go. Forgive and let go. If you're struggling with it, that is legitimate, and that's why I'm here. I can help you with body code sessions, emotion code, body code. That's what I do. I release that energy so that that flow of forgiveness and love happens at an organic level, and it's not forced. So if you do need help, that's legit. I've had to clear stuff for myself um, be because it was hard because it's not easy. But once you release that emotional energy and those blocks, those limiting beliefs and patterns in a healing session with me, it does make it easier so that when you spend your time with Jesus, all that clutter and that junk, all that's already been removed. And so you have like this beautiful clean slate to just sit with Jesus and then focus on falling in love with him greater, just holding on to him latching on to him, him being your first love, and then checking your heart to see how you can love others better. So I hope this inspires you. I pray it blesses you. If you are struggling with expectations of people, or if you're struggling with feeling forgive, or unforgiveness or grief, because this causes grief. Like when we're in this place, feeling funky about people, it's a grieving process. And so if you do need help, I can help you release that. So that way your path is easier. Your path of living 1 Corinthians 13 flows more naturally. It becomes easier because I've released those hard emotions for you. I've released those hard limiting patterns and then I've installed the truth into the cells of your body, making it easier for you to have this deep, intimate relationship with Jesus in this deep love for others, this action love towards others. So I love you guys. I am praying for you. Reach out to me if I can help or support you. Thank you.